Care Art of Sports here with Jason Perillo. Uh, man, it's the weekend. It's finally happened, man. The uh, Tito versus uh, Sonnen. It's 20 years in the making. Uh, is there, you're obviously in camp with him, talking to him every day. Is this that big of a grudge match uh, on his side? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it, 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 the match itself is just, a, it's a grudge match also, not with Chad, but with himself. It's very important for Tito to go on top. He wants to finish his career on his terms. He wants to finish his career with a W, obviously. And uh, he's done everything he can to get ready for this fight, man. He's really excited and he's in great shape. He talks about how this is, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. Uh, and, you know, his birthday is like two days away after the fight. You know, Chael pinned him on his birthday 20 years ago. It, uh, how happy do you think he'll be getting the victory on Saturday night? Oh, he'll be excited. You'll see that grave digger. You'll see the whole nine yards. He's going to be excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, because he knows that he knows he's, he's made it up in his mind that this is his last fight. And, uh, you know, he wants to feel what the reason why he's been fighting all these years. I mean, to win a fight is a whole different animal. I mean, the, the, the feeling of winning is obviously a whole different animal than the losing feeling, you know. And uh, he wants that feeling to go on the rest of your life. Because the term is you're only as good as your last fight now, right? So you might as well finish your career with a win. And then you're as good as that fight, right? You, uh, your camp. I mean, Tito's saying this is his last fight. Obviously, BJ said kind of going into this that it was kind of towards the end. What's that like as a trainer? Because, you know, a lot of the, the old adage is once you kind of start talking about your retired retirement, you're retired right. already. What's kind of your take on, on actually being in the, in the gym with these guys? Well, yeah, I mean, it, here's the thing is these guys have been retiring for years. Right. <laughs> exactly. So it's not like it's not like it's, uh, you know, it, it's even with Tito, I say it all the time. People ask me all the time, is BJ really going to retire? Is BJ going to finally retire now? I don't know. Right. You know what I mean? Do you want me to give you a, you want me to say yes or no? I mean, I, I mean, you're going to make, make me sound like an asshole in the, in the future if I give you a real answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Tito, I can even say it right now. This is his last fight. But if he called me up in six months and said, fuck it, I'm fighting again, it wouldn't shock me a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me a bit. Um, yeah, you know, I, it's it's you know it's a it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be be a part of these 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 final fights with these legends. It's, both of them are Hall of Famers. I mean, they're they're UFC MMA legends, you know, Bellator legends, you know. So, at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a great privilege to be a part of it, and um, I'm glad that they still are able to listen to me even at this 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 stage of their career. Um, I'm lucky with the experiences I've had now, just with them, with other fighters, fighters before them, and fighters while they've been around. You know that I have enough experience to where they can still gain something off me. You know, I, I'm very fortunate for that, and I'm fortunate that they're able to listen to me and, and, and make those gains. Well, they they see the obviously all the work you put in. Uh, speak, you you sp talked about BJ. Um, Tell us how he was after the fight, what kind of his emotions were like after uh, Sunday night. You know, they, they were down. You know, they were down. They were just like, you, you know, what do you think? You know what I mean? It, it, it's common sense. He's not going to be in the, you know, he's not going to be happy with, with the situation the way it was. He understands the situation a little bit more because BJ's always been, you know, it's taken him a while to understand that at the end of the day, you know, you got to, you know, you fight one time in five years and you fell short in that fight. You know, it, it, you know, it, matchmaking becomes a, 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 a very significant part of whether you can return or not. Do you know what I mean? You, you're not going to be able to. Ret you, you can make the attempt to return, but matchmaking is going to be a very valuable thing to build your confidence, to build, to get your timing back, to get your your groove back. You know. Stella's got to get her groove back. So does BJ, and it's not going to happen with a top ten guy. You know what I mean? A 24 year old kid. So. Um, I, I really liked the Lamas fight before that kind of fell through. I, well, I liked the Cole Miller fight and the Dennis Seaver fight. Those are the fights I liked because yeah. now we're talking about guys in the, in the top 30. Mm -hmm. And again, they're fighting against a guy that's fought once in five years mm -hmm. and lost that fight. You know what I mean? So does that guy even deserve to fight a top 10 guy? You know, mm -hmm. the, he does because of his legendary status. And, and, but, but, but unfortunately, that's only, you know, that's the gaining status is like on paper the legendary now, status right? on paper, you know, and, and that status is going to help put legendary status on paper for the other kid. And that's the nature of the sport. That's the nature of the fight game. And that's just how it is, you know, and, and we're involved in it. You know, you got to be on one side or the other and you're going to be on both sides if you're involved in this fighting business for the rest of your life. Right, exactly. Uh, speaking of your... Um your star pupil, uh, Michael Bisming, middleweight champion of the world. Uh, we had saw him going a little back and forth with Tyrone. Obviously, we see Tyrone's fighting uh, um, Thompson again. Uh, what's next for for Mike? When can we see him back? Um, you know, it, 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 Mike's 
Mike's doing too many movie premieres right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's good. Mike's going to be back ASP, ASAP. I know that he was talking about getting some work done because um, I know he had an injury, you know, a little bit of injury over his last fight. Um, I'm thinking I, he's looking like I would say March, April, somewhere around there. I could see him getting to, you know, getting back in there. We're looking um, at Yoel, do you think? Yeah, Yoel would be great. Um, Tyler and Woodley, I, that fight to me doesn't, I mean, unless we're fighting for a 185 or 170 pound title, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a, like, I, that fight doesn't make sense to me. Right. You know, I mean, sure, if he wants to come up at 185 and go for the title, then yeah. But doing a catch weight at 180, that does, I mean, that doesn't even, right. I think that's just something to talk about, right. you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and I know that there's other guys. I mean, that division's stacked. There's plenty of guys, and, and, and Michael's never turned anybody down, never said no to any fight, and that champion, as a champion, he's never going to do that either. He's going he's gonna to fight whoever comes. It'd be great to have Yoel. Yoel, I, all guys are beatable, you know? It's just a matter of, 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 of what guy's showing up to beat him that night, you know? Just want to, last question, want to get your take on, uh, obviously, you're a great MMA mind. Ronda Rousey, you know, there was a big hype of her coming back. She lasted 46 seconds. What was kind of your take on that whole situation and, and her mindset kind of going forward? Well, you know, I mean, you know, she she kind of get built. I mean, I look at her like she got kind of built up pretty quick, you know, and, and, and she was in a division that, you know, there was some great matchmaking be, being made on her part. And uh, and she's obviously a star. She's obviously a tremendous athlete. You know, she there's there's an aura. There's something about her that drew the attention that she drew. So, uh you know, you got to give it to her for that, you know, and, and unfortunately, um, her stand-up game isn't, isn't, isn't to where it needs to be. People talk about it being it. People talk about Ronda Rousey, like the game's passing her by, or like she hasn't evolved with the game, right? Am I right or wrong? Right that? Before, yeah, yeah I've, I've heard some lines like, to me that I scratch my head when I hear that, I think to myself, no, Ronda Rousey hasn't really got the chance to catch up. You know what I mean? Ronda Rousey's been winning all these fights with the judo, with 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 a, not a one-dimensional, but she's been one. You know, she hasn't spent the time to develop her stand-up game. To, to, I mean, look, I don't know what she does with her coach. I know that poor poor guy's gotten a hell of a lot of shit. You know what I mean? And, and I'm sure they're doing something. You know, they did something right leading up to the last couple of fights. We know that because we're still talking about it right now. So they're doing something right. You know. Um, whether it's an involvement or never even never really getting that point you know i said she was exposed i think she was a little exposed to stand-up fighting i don't think she i think she is a little green when it comes to standing up and exchanging punches you know and i don't see anybody being in front of her prior holly holmes that really had something you know the girl that she knocked out was a what was what her body mechanics she looks like she was you know taking a a UFC class at the UFC gyms. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's the way I look at it. like like right. so. I mean, she she did so she almost had it. And we can't even blame Rhonda. She had a false sense of security with that. Right. You know what I mean? With that false sense of security, and then if and then all of a sudden she's a superstar with all this money. All of a sudden she's babied in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's letting her keeping her honest. Right. You know, and, and and it ends up being in a situation where there's a little of exposure, if you ask me. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate for her because I thought she was great for the sport. I think she's great. You know, I think she generates money for other athletes as well. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And, it, and, and hopefully I'd like to see her come back. I'd like to see her do something. Yeah, you can't be the best fighter in your gym, right? Because then that, that becomes right. a problem. Yeah. <laughs> who, who gave you the shiner, man? Was that, was that Tito? This was, uh, this was BJ last week. <laughs> Matt, um, when I was at the workout for, I think it was Anderson and Bisbee. Was it, yeah, Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike, like, give you a spinning back kick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get hit every open workout. This is the first <laughs> open workout I've got hit, oh. man. I'm, as soon as we cut it quick, I'm like, fuck, Ooh. on stage. <laughs> I lucked out. Thank you yeah. so much, Jason. Really appreciate, appreciate your time, it. man. Right Best Thank of luck you. Saturday. Right. Thank you.